Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, I was asked by a few viewers to do some little simple paintings and um, I've gotten to where I rarely do these uh, because they take a little more time than I want uh, to give them. So, uh, but I did tell them that I would paint some and this was an order so um, I would have done some little simple flowers, uh, but since this is an order, I just thought I may as well go ahead and film it and uh, show you how to do this. Now, I just have a couple colors here, and this is just regular acrylic paint. Generally, I use a craft paint from like folk art from Walmart, uh, and this white is the folk art. Uh, the blue is just an oops paint uh, that I got in a small container. At, uh, at Lowe's and it just was a real muted blue, which is what I wanted. Uh, if you don't have a muted blue, just take some blue and add some gray and white to it until you get the color that you want. I don't like for my sky to be, to be bright uh, because I think it just gives it more of a realistic look if it, if it has more of a muted look to it. Like I said, you could take just some blue and a little bit of white and a little bit of gray and make your own your own blue. But as you notice, what I was doing was dipping one side of my paintbrush, one corner of my paintbrush in the white, the other corner in the blue, and then I'm just kind of brushing back and forth is what I was doing. So, uh, and then the same thing with the green. You dip one corner in the green and one corner in in the white and on this i think i used maybe um maybe a marsh green seems like it was a marsh green that i used here uh, but again just do, use whatever color that you want it just depends on how bright you want your grass because this is going to be a spring church then uh, i was okay with a little brighter green and now I'm just taking a straight edge and drawing a simple church. And it's going to be partially off the board. So these are really easy to do uh, because I'm doing this church on a hill. I like, I like to do churches on a hill. And I, I didn't realize until I did my editing that this part here at the top where the steeple is, I had that off uh, out of focus. So um, I'll be showing that to you later and you'll see how simple that part was. Uh, but so now that I've drawn drawn it out with pencil and a lot of times I don't even draw this out first a lot of times I just kind of wing it because these churches are so primitive that if they're not exact uh, it doesn't matter you're uh, just that real um, imperfect look is is kind of what you're going for anyway um, if I had uh, paintings in my in my store that were perfect. I doubt they would sell. People like this primitive look. So um, this lady that I'm painting this for, I, I do a different painting for her every season because uh, she has this easel in her office that she puts it on. And uh, she's kind of known for having those paintings. So uh, last season I did a church that was, um, that was a winter church and so now I'm just going to do one in a spring setting. As you can see the way we loaded our brush for this painting very easily we were able to make that sky look somewhat realistic. So now we're just filling in all the white uh, and then we'll go back and add a little bit of dimension later but right now we're just kind of coloring in where we drew our church out. Now, I don't claim to be a painter. I am a painter by no means. Uh, I just do, I self-taught myself to do some just simple paintings. And I can't do anything except primitive paintings because uh, primitive is very forgiving, uh, very simple. So, uh, so I can manage those, but I, I don't do anything detailed. Now, if you want to see more detailed paintings, uh, my sister is an actual artist, and she has a page called Carla Keck Art. So, if you want to go over and follow her, then uh, then feel free to do that. But with me, you're just going to get an occasional 
very simple painting. So once we get this white filled in, then we can start with the roof. And I'm just taking a dark brown. I think that I have, I'm using burnt umber here. And, uh, and that's a, just a apple barrel craft paint, folk art. And, uh, and I'm just gonna fill in this roof here. And again, I know that, that that sepal is out of focus, but it just has a little triangle on the top that I'm also gonna be uh, coloring in or painting in with this color. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, I do these paintings on just a regular board. Uh, I even sometimes do them on on pieces of fence panel, but this one's a little wider because she wanted a larger painting. Uh, but uh, it's a very affordable way to uh, create little paintings. It just cuts some little sections of fence and paint on them. And then um, and then when I get finished, then I just sand, sand around the edges to uh, neaten them up. And uh, then people can kind of use these as shelf sitters or they can put them on a small easel, um, but they'll fit into your uh, farmhouse and cottage uh, decor. Now here, I'm just uh, drawing a little door with an arch. Um, I keep that simple also. Um, I don't even bother with a handle on it. I just keep it very simple. And the same thing with with the windows here and sometimes I'll, I'll add some a window to the top there and sometimes I'll do some side windows I'll position my church where I could do some um, side windows but this one I'm going to keep it very simple and just do a couple of arch windows beside the door now I try to uh, line my window somewhat up with the top of the door but then the bottom at the bottom I'm going to uh, end them obviously higher up than the door I love churches for Easter decor or for for spring decor because uh, it just they have such a springy look, especially if you do with them in a spring setting. But I also love them for Christmas. Okay, for this is the walkway here, and uh, so I'm just starting, just kind of brushing back and forth uh, with a brown, and I mixed a little bit of gray in it, I think. Um, but you're just going to go with kind of a just a brown and I start with it being skinny at the door and then just kind of gradually bring it out because as as a pathway gets closer to you it gets it it looks bigger so that just makes it look more realistic so now I'm just adding a little more green and yellow I'm adding some yellow to my green and just kind of creating some dimension on the on the grassy area so just a little add just a little here and there and and then we'll just do that to all the grassy area and we're just going to kind of layer up the colors and the more you layer up the colors the the better it's going to look now in the open space at, at the roof there you could put a cross on the wall there i have done that before uh, like i said i'm just keeping this one simple but um a cross would look nice there some sort of sign uh, now here I'm just gonna just gonna build a couple of bushes over uh, beside the and behind that hill because we're on a hill. So I'm just gonna kind of add some shrubbery back there, uh, just to kind of fill in that space. And I'm making just kind of two tree shrubs, whatever you want to call them. This is very um, almost abstract. So it's just the illusion of some trees or some shrubs there beside it. And then of course the heel there is gonna be on in front of that. So, and now I'm adding a little bit of white to my, to my green to add some more dimension and add a little bit of yellow. And again, just like with the grass, we're building dimension. But I do like to keep my shrubs darker than my grass is. Because again, the grass is, is up front, so uh, it's going to be closer to us, so the light is shining on it better. Uh, and now I'm just adding a little bit of highlighting by just fading a little bit of, uh, starting with the light around the top and just kind of fading it down. 
and that just kind of gives the the illusion of the light shining on on the bushes or trees or shrubs whatever we want to call these and then i'm adding some in the front there and down this side just so you can see that that is a separate tree or shrub um and I got it a little bit lighter than I wanted it, so uh, you, you'll see that later I add just a little bit more dark back into it. But uh, that kind of gives it the illusion that that one shrub is in front of the other. As you can see, I'm not speeding this painting up at all uh, because I want you to see how much, it, how much time it actually takes to paint it. And there I am adding a little bit of green back into that where I got that a little bit light. But like I said, the more dimension you add, the better. If you try to add too much though, when it's wet, uh, too many colors, you'll make your colors muddy. So uh, if you're unsure, then let each uh, coat dry just a little bit. And there I'm adding just a little bit of the lighter brown into this pathway. And uh, that gives the look of the light shining on the pathway. Like I said, if you're if you're unsure, just let these steps dry a little bit more bef between uh, layers. Uh, now here, I'm just tapping on a little bit of the yellow and white into my green, uh, just to kind of uh, give the illusion of maybe some little wildflowers uh, beside the path. Uh, that just kind of softens up that the path edge, and. Um, and just gives it a better look, I think. And then, like I said, I'm just gonna keep adding a little bit of yellow and adding some dimension into the color of my grass and um, just kind of give that a better look. Uh, and then I'm gonna add some highlighting. Uh, so I'm picking up a little bit more yellow and a, a little bit of white into my green and I'm just gonna highlight uh, the top of that hill there um, and and then I'm just going to kind of take my brush and just kind of blend it down a little bit don't blend that very top because you want to keep that grassy hill there the edge of the grassy hill and then just blend it on down so here I am adding a little more of the um, of the little yellow patches of flowers into the yard so where I took it down beside the path now I'm just kind of feathering out some little areas that maybe they've got a little patch of um, of uh, wildflowers so I'm just going to kind of instead of just having a straight line down the down the path you don't want just that straight line because that it, it just looks too uniform it just doesn't look realistic so I'm just kind of feathering them out here and there. And uh, you know, you're not, not gonna just have wildflowers right up against the path. They're gonna, the seeds are gonna get scattered and, and they're just gonna be in different places. So I just kind of do that to give it more of a realistic look. Although I'm really not going for realistic here, if you can add a little extra detail, why not? And then I'm also gonna add a little extra into the path. I'm just taking a little bit, uh, adding a little bit more white into my brown and just kind of very lightly brushing that across the pathway. And that just kind of gives it some dimension and the illusion of the light shining on it. So now I'm gonna add some color into the windows. And while I'm not going to make it look like stained glass and have different colors, I'm going to make it look like the, um, almost like a marble stained glass look. Uh, so I'm taking some berry wine color, any color that is kind of a, a red with a little bit of purple in it maybe. Um, I don't like to use straight red for this, it just doesn't look right. Uh, but I'm using that and then I'm adding some white into it. So. I, I used that berry with a little bit of white. I just kind of dipped my in both and uh, and just paint that in. And then I dip my brush mostly in the white and just kind of create little waves in the glass. 
So that kind of gives it a marbled look. I know you've seen that in some of the old church windows. So that's kind of what I'm going for because that's easier than trying to do the little sections with the stained glass. And you wouldn't have to use the berry color here. You could use a color blue or green or um, even a gold color. Um, at this point, you just you use the colors that you want in this. And I'm doing some little, um, some little flowers down the path just by kind of tapping some of this pink in. Uh, I know we already did that with the yellow, but uh, I, just because I'm using these, um, this color in the windows, I kind of wanted to bring that color into some of the rest of my painting. So I'm just kind of dipping uh, that brush into some white while I still have a little bit of that berry on it. I don't want to make these flowers too bright, but, um, or too dark rather. Uh, so I'm just, and, and kind of do this lightly. You don't want to make these too precise. You just want kind of, like I said, the illusion of flowers down the path. So I just kind of do that on both sides and just kind of, like I said, feather it into, um, into the rest of the grass. Nothing has to be perfect here, just what you think looks good. But I, I wouldn't want to overdo it for sure. Lavender flowers would be really pretty here also. You could do these churches without any kind of scenery around them if you wanted uh, because you could just kind of do them closer up and just do very little scenery at all. Uh, I just, when, when the paintings are larger like this, I like to add a little bit of scenery and just not have it all church. Uh, but I do, especially at Christmas time, I do some churches that are just really just the church with the sky background. And I, and I kind of make those look more Christmassy. You can put a wreath on the door or, or on the church itself. Um, but really, you could do these just about any way you want. I know a lot of times you've seen these churches in Hobby Lobby, and they're in, I mean, they're very, very simple. I've seen them done with texture, too, and you can just uh, add you a little bit of plaster of Paris into your paint. Uh, here, where I'm adding some white into it, just to give it a little bit more dimension, I'm adding just a different color of white, just to kind of give it a little more dimension. And, but here is where you could kind of add some texture to it. You could uh, add some plaster of Paris into your paint and then just kind of add some texture on. Now, I'm using metallic paint here, and Apple Barrel has those, and actually Walmart even carries them. Um, and this is just in the bronze, uh, but I like to add a little bit of metallic into uh, some of these churches. And especially on the roof, uh, but here I've also done it a little bit in the door. But I just kind of brushed on just a little, some highlights of, of the bronze. I want to keep that brown also, but I'm just adding some highlights of the bronze. And then I take just a little bit of white on my paintbrush and go just across the top of the roof just to show the light shining on it. And that little touch also adds a lot. And this little painting is almost finished. It, it really didn't take much at all. And, and like I said, it could be finished at this point. I just add just a little bit more highlighting to it. Just because I can, not because it really needs it. Uh, but you could stop a lot earlier than I did here because it essentially is finished. And now I'm just going to take that uh, sandpaper and go down the edges of this because it is a board and neaten up those edges. I always do that when I paint on boards is just take that sandpaper and, and neaten up your edges. Obviously, you could do these on canvas and, and you could get the little canvases at the Dollar Tree and have very little in it. Uh, but I just, I'm used to doing mine on board, so... Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will be getting back to my thrift flips and decorating and crafts. Uh, I just wanted to do this video for a couple who had asked for it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.